welcome to lecture 44th of uh, electric power system in unsymmetrical fault analysis we are going to discuss the double line to ground fault so here we can see that there is a fault occurring in bus number k which is present in the phase b now the line to line fault is associated with respect to ground with a fault impedance zf then such type of fault is known as double line to ground fault because two lines are associated that is the line b and line c and a ground is associated with the fault that is the reason it is known as double line to ground fault now since phase a is not associated with the fault the current in phase a due to the fault is zero and the voltages of the fault bus b fault bus k in phase b and c are equal which is equal to zf into the sum of the current in the phase b and phase c this is in accordance with the kvl law which is the voltage drop in the bus taking into convention sign convention for the current now since the fault current in bus a or phase a is zero so we can write that the zero sequence component of the current which is one third of the sum of the component a b and c is equal to 1 by third of b plus c because ifa is equal to zero now the voltages of both the phases b and c are equal for the fault bus k which is equal to zf times the sum of the voltages i uh, in the in the phase b and phase c which is equal to 3 times the fault impedance into the zero sequence component of the current in the phase a now if you substitute that in the symmetrical components form for the phase a zero sequence positive sequence and negative sequence we get the constant multiplied with the voltage in the phase a phase b and phase c for the fault occurring at the kth bus. This is equal to this component. As we know that the voltage in phase B is equal to voltage of phase A and voltage of phase C is equal to voltage of phase B. So we can convert both phase uh, B and C to be equal. Since voltage of phase C is equal to voltage of phase B and voltage of phase b is voltage of phase b here now expand the second and third equation so we will get the positive sequence component and the negative sequence component with respect to the phase a is equal to one third of the constant one third of the constant into the voltage of phase b for the kth bus fault in the kth bus so this implies that the positive and negative sequence component of the fault voltages in the bus k is equal to is equal and from the first equation we can put it three times the zero sequence component of the voltage will be equal to bka plus two times the voltage in the phase b now expand the phase a voltage into the sum of zero sequence positive sequence and negative sequence and phase b voltage you put it at three times zf into the zero sequence component this on expansion further we know that the voltage of the phase b and phase c are equal to zf into the product of the sum of the phase b voltage phase b current and phase c current so three times the zero sequence component of the current is equal to sum of the current in the phase b and phase c now you collect the zero sequence term and recall that the phase sequence of voltages in the positive sequence and negative sequence voltage are equal so this when we put it in the zero sequence so three times the voltage of the phase a zero sequence is equal to voltage of phase a zero sequence plus six times zf into ifa zero plus two times voltage of the eighth phase in the positive sequence now you solve for the positive sequence voltage 
So this is equal to the zero sequence voltage minus three times the ZF into the zero sequence current. Thus we have seen that both positive sequence and negative sequence voltages were already equal to the zero sequence voltage minus three times the ZF into zero sequence current. And since the current in the phase A is zero, the fault current in the phase A is zero, the sum of the zero sequence, positive sequence and negative sequence current will be zero. This is on expansion of this term. These last two results characterize the double line to ground fault. So we have obtained the fault voltages and we have obtained the fault current. So now we can realize by putting all the three sequence network in parallel as follows. So here we have the positive sequence component of the current. Here we have the negative sequence component of the current and zero sequence component of the current which are placed in parallel to obtain the double line to ground fault. So the positive fault occurring at bus K, positive sequence current flow through the positive se sequence impedance. Then you have the negative sequence uh, current which is flowing through the negative sequence impedance and zero sequence current which is flowing to the zero sequence impedance. And this you have the free fault voltages. And then we have the three times the fault impedance which forms the neutral impedance. Now clearly we can obtain the zero positive sequence current from the network analysis as Vf divided by the total Z equivalent term. Also we can obtain from the current division the negative sequence component of the current and zero sequence component of the current. This can obtain from the current division using this circuit. So we have seen that in double line to ground fault the positive, negative and zero sequence component of the circuit are connected in parallel and from here we can obtain the positive sequence component of the current, negative sequence component of the current and zero sequence component of the current. Here ZKK indicates the impedance of the kth bus. So if you have the fault at bus number 2, so this will be equal to Z22. So the self impedance of the bus 2. If the bolted fault at ZF is set equal to 0, then if, if, if the, there is a bolted fault, then fault impedance is set equal to 0. If ZF is equal to infinite, the zero sequence circuit becomes an open circuit and no zero sequence current will flow. This we already know that if there is no fault impedance uh, or the ground is open, then there will be no zero sequence current. And the equations revert back to those for the line to line fault. So if ground is not involved, then it is basically a line to line fault. So once sequence currents are calculated at the fault bus K, sequence voltage changes at all buses of the system and then can be calculated from the Z bus matrix. So in this way we can calculate the double line to ground fault and if ground is not involved then it is basically a double line fault. Thank you.